What's up guys, this is Steven Wonderboy Thompson. I'm gonna be breaking down fighters, movies, and TV shows. All right, let's get after it, baby. GSP versus Captain America. I was actually really excited to see this because GSP obviously is a buddy of mine, but to see him on like a good movie like this, like a like legit movie, it was super cool. These are like my all time favorite movies, by the way. All the Avengers, Captain America. Ever since I was, you know, a kid, I knew they were gonna make these movies legit. Natasha. There he is, flying sidekick. Now, first off, first off, the flying sidekick, ask Travis Brown what that feels like in a real situation, all right? <laughs> it was uh, Verdum that I think he ran across the cage and flying sidekicked him in the face, right? So flying sidekicks actually work. Just throwing that out there. Oh, got some, looks like GSP's got some capoeira action going too. Okay, for one, that definitely was not GSP doing that butterfly twist. Gotta be a stuntman. I th GSP can do like a backflip, but he can't do a butterfly twist. So that was definitely stuntman. But this stuff right here is all GSP. Superman punch, throwing front kicks, side kicks. He can do a kip up as well. As of right now, like this could be a legit fight. Cause it's all, it's everything that you're seeing in an actual MMA fight. Roundhouse kicks, knees, clinch situations. And there goes the backflip, which is a solid win, victory win. You know, doing a backflip after a fight, I'd usually do that, I'd do something. If I knock my opponent out, I'll do a backflip. Or a corkscrew, I did that in my very first fight, which was awesome, go check that out. But for what I'm seeing right now so far, everything can actually work in a real situation. The knees, the side kicks, the front kicks, the Superman punch, and I think you just called out Captain America's like, hey, fight me like a man. I've never seen GSP look like that to anybody. That's actually like a scary GSP. I've never seen him so frightening before in my life. You can't tell me that's not frightening. If he looks at you across the cage like that, you're gonna die. Oh, this is awkward. Oh, Steven Seagal. Sensei Seagal. Oh, the old front kick. What was it? Him and Anderson Silva, remember that? He I don't, taught, him that kick. taught him the front kick. I'm pretty sure the front kick's the very first kick you learn in MMA, so whatever. Now, I was actually a big Steven Seagal fan growing up just because in his movies, you can actually see the arm being like ripped in half and like crushed. I wouldn't say Aikido would be the right martial art, especially for a street situation, um, but they say he's, he was actually really good at Aikido. This looks like a recent movie though, not the old school Steven Seagal. This is the, this is the older Steven Seagal. Wait, is that GSP? That is GSP, what? Wow, we're just GSPing it up right now. Dude, it's so funny just to see how Steven Seagal just stands up. <laughs> he's like, he's 90 years old, like using his hands to stand up after he just fell off of like a second floor, you know, balcony. I just can't see GSP being a bad guy. I just can't see it. Look at that face, what is that? GSP, what face were you making just then? Ooh, front kick, okay. Now, let me pause this for a second. From what I hear, Steven Seagal is not the nicest guy to his stuntman. So I wonder how that went down with GSP. If he knew, hey, I wanna take it easy or this guy will beat the crap out of me. But I hear he's actually a, 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 a not too nice to his, his stuntman. Like, you really, hits him. Cause I've seen guys come to TriStar and try and hit hard and GSP is like, he's like the enforcer. Make sure everybody's respectful. He's that kind of type of guy. I've never seen Steven Seagal do this with his hands before. He's some kind of like Kung Fu thing going on. A little wax on, wax off thing going on. The little pose that Steven Seagal has. Oh, the Superman punch. Oh, see, that would have taken anybody out, but not Steven Seagal. Ooh, double leg. Oh, he blocked it. Oh, he's, he's gonna break his arm, break it. Break GSP's arm, Steven. Oh, now here comes the knife. Here comes the knife stuff. 
Oh. Oh. Oh, it's going into GSP's neck. He's done. <laughs> oh my goodness, what? GSP has got to work on his dying, his death face. I think GSP would have definitely crushed Steven Seagal in a real situation, just throwing that out there. And we have to work on, please somebody get in touch with GSP, we're gonna work on his acting skills. All right, his death face, I don't know what he's doing with his lower lip, but I don't know. Um, I think from one to 10, that fight scene was about a four. I would call, I would say it's a four. Shut up, Rob Snyder versus Bob Zapp? Wow, let me throw something out there real quick. Rob Snyder's a tiny guy. Bob Sat is probably like over 300 pounds, just massive. I love little Michael. Not a lot a small guy could really do, unless you go for like vital areas, the eyes, maybe the neck, the throat, the groin area, and that's a big if, depending on how tough this guy is, right? So let's see what, let's see what we got. Ooh, okay. See there, see there? He went to the groin and he went to the neck. Vital area is what I say. So somebody who did this choreograph fight scene knows a little something. He used a book though. I don't know what a, I don't know what he, how he had a book in his hand. It's so funny to listen to Bob Sapp scream like that. <laughs> but I guarantee you, Bob Sapp wears those kind of unaware in real life. Got to. Oh, now he's going for the fingers, the wrist manipulation. Oh, he's gonna break it. Oh! Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I love, oh! Hits him with an ax kick, what? Did Rob Schneider actually do some martial arts training for this? Maybe, I don't know, but that was an ax, a legit ax kick from Rob Schneider. Um, in a real situation, obviously Bob Sapp is gonna wanna get a hold of this guy, right? So I think it would be fairly easy for a big guy like that to actually grab a hold of somebody smaller, right? But uh, that would have gone the other way in a real situation. But I liked what I saw, you know, going for those vital areas, using his agility and speed, his smaller size to deflect his, uh, you know, the bigger guy's strikes. I kind of like that a lot better than the, the Stephen Seagal and GSP fight scene for sure. But a real situation like, you know, anybody that's grabbing your wrist like that, like, you know what I mean? You're not gonna, nobody's gonna be able to hold my wrist like that. You know, I'm just gonna like pull my hand out. Yeah, I mean, it's not that realistic. Maybe against somebody who has no idea what they're doing. But another, against another fighter, it's not happening. Who's the bitch now, bitch? Okay, here we go. Deadpool. I love this guy, man. Ryan Reynolds is the same guy in every movie though, right? He's that same comical, witty, kind of funny guy. Uh, in every one of his movies. It's like the same guy. <laughs> That's an understatement. Gina Carano's in here. Oh, superhero landing, superhero landing. Boom! Superhero landing. Yeah, that's really hard on your knees. <laughs> that's really hard. It really is hard on your knees, actually. I did, I did a superhero landing after my first fight after I knocked, knocked that down Stygian. I did the, the corkscrew, landed in the superhero stance. Definitely hard on the knees, for sure. Not realistic, guys. You can't jump off of high stuff like that and live. I prefer not to hit a woman, so please play. Boom! Oh, Colossus is the man. Gina Carano's a beast. And she plays in some really good movies, too. Finish fucking her the fuck up! Language, please. Suck a cock! Language, please. Am I even allowed to be listening to this right now, guys? The NMF is listening to this stuff. I can't be hearing this nonsense, this cussing. Now, I do suspect, uh, suspect uh, Gina Carana is that strong in real life. I mean, she's got bigger traps and arms than I do, just saying. Now, the rear naked choke defense from Gina Carano in this, not realistic. Not realistic. I mean, you know, I don't know anybody that would like actually, if, you, if you're lifting your body off the ground, that would just hold you up, right? I think realistic, they're, they're, if you lift your feet up, they're gonna take you down to finish that rear naked choke. And you're not gonna throw somebody over your shoulder, especially somebody that big. Obviously she has superpowers. Uh, is it no go on that one? Ooh, okay, for one, catching somebody's fist, 
no go. You're never gonna, somebody throws a full on punch to your face, you're never gonna catch somebody's fist like that. It's not happening. Only in the movies, people. Thanks. We got, we got Fedor Emelianenko. I feel like Fedor could really be this guy, like a Rambo type dude. He, he looks kind of sinister anyway because he's got no facial expressions. He's happy, sad. You never know. It's always the same. It's always just... Oh, dude, that was a sick throw. Definitely um, could do that in a real situation. Now he's just running through. He looks like he's lost some weight. Okay, maybe not. I can see that this is... Oh, nice throw, man. Got some wrestling takedowns in here. This is actually one of the most realistic fight scenes ever. The only thing that isn't realistic, I think, is how they all come at him one at a time. Now, I don't know if these guys are just alpha dogs and just wanted to see what each one could do, so they just let them fight, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. but in a real situation, if there's three, even two on one, I'm running the other direction. I'm not even gonna take a chance. Now he's throwing these guys hard. I can see him really beating up his stuntman too. Oh! Oh, rear naked choke. Taking him under water, I like it. Make it hard for harder for him to breathe. Man, he drowned him quick. Now, it doesn't take much, especially in a rear naked choke. It takes about four seconds to actually make somebody pass out. But rear naked choke, I recommend not trying that at home, you guys. Don't be going around choking your brother or sister or your cat or dog, because somebody could probably end up dying. Well, this is the first, I had no idea he was in a movie. Fedor was actually in a movie. I like the fight scene because actually that's how Fedor actually fights in a real situation. He uses his wrestling, he uses his strikes, he uses his, uh, his jiu-jitsu, works some throws, uh, worked the rear naked choke, took one guy out. Um, I'm liking that fight scene actually. One of the most realistic fight scenes I've seen so far. I like it. All right, so we got Jet Li. All right, for one, I gotta say I'm a huge Jet Li fan. I've always been um, into anime and old kung fu flicks back in the day, and Jet Li was one of my all time favorite kung fu guys. Although that little guy plays in, uh, that guy plays in uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, wait, he's out uh, doing karate too. The heck? I like, the, I like the fact that he's using this guy as a human shield and as a weapon. He's a weapon. This dude is a, a weapon of mass destruction right now. There's Tito. So you got Randy Couture, Chuck Liddell, and Tito Ortiz all in the same cage in the same movie. And he takes these big dudes out, no way. But that's, but that's, that's why you gotta love, you know, the Jet Li movies, man. Like he, he just hook kicked this guy in the chest and the guy went flying. I hit guys with a hook kick as hard as I can and they barely even, you know, move. A hook kick is not a very powerful weapon, but this dude just flew across the cage like it was nothing. There you go again, catching the fist. Can't catch a fist, y'all. Stop it. Now I like the leg checks and stuff. Ooh, oh, number one. If you fight me and you have a piercing in a real situation, I'm, 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 I'm pulling that earring out, 100%. I don't know why he would have a ring, an MMA fighter would have an earring in, in the cage to begin with, but uh, you're wearing earrings, you better be ready to get it used against you. There's Tito. No, okay, Tito is definitely the better bad guy than GSP. Definitely the better bad guy. He's got the face, he's got the look. GSP doesn't have the look at all. And I think because everybody knows GSP, so it's hard to see him in that situation oh okay one punch from tito uh you would have been you would have been out jelly would have been done ah that's got a kill oh growing shot there you go vital areas against bigger bigger guys if i had to fight a bigger guy in a real situation i'm gonna kick you in the nuts right off the bat 100 percent. i mean i don't even care if people talk crap it's you versus me I'm gonna do whatever I can do to, to, to neutralize the situation. And I, if it's kicking you in the groin, I got you. 
How does he get out of this thing? Oh, he just climbs over the cage. The <laughs> None of these techniques would ever work in a street situation. I'm just saying. Dude, he's even fighting the referee. Now, a Tomonagi, which what, what you just saw, where he grabbed his opponent and took his foot and threw him over his shoulder, you could use it in a street situation, but I would think twice about going to my back or going to the ground. You know, because you don't know if your opponent has a friend or not, and they can come up and get on, jump on top of you or kick you in the head. So don't recommend it, but I think it could be done. Now he's using the cage as like a trampoline. I would pay like a billion dollars to somebody if, if to ever, if there, if there was an actual street fight like this. Jet Li just beat up 10 to 15 MMA guys with experience. Not realistic, y'all. Randy Couture was probably <clears throat> one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, especially in the earlier to mid UFCs. And he was kind of like the people's champ at the time. You had the bad boy, Tito Ortiz. You had Chuck Liddell, who was kind of considered the bad boy as well. And Randy Couture was just the old guy going out there and doing work. But he, somehow he just made he just made it happen, made it work. Go out there and just crushing dudes. And he, and he was one of the best, I, I think, MMA wrestlers who ever stepped out in the octagon. Yeah, who are you? Uh, Girl Scouts of America. Girl Scouts of America? <laughs> Dude, that, that was it? That was it? Rainy Couture gets taken out, one of the best of all time. Steven Seagal, less than three seconds. With a chop to the spine, not even to the neck. Chop to the spine. Ooh, a little joint manipulation there. A little, a little raised arm bar. Dude, I like the in close knees though. Oh, never seen anybody fall like that after getting punched. Oh, dude, hits him with a chop to the, a chop to the spine. And then, a, and then a knee strike to the face. Randy Couture dead, one of the best of all times. Gone in three seconds. I have never seen anybody go unconscious from a body shot, ever, never. Yeah, it seems like anatomically like impossible, right? Well, I think that, there, well, in the body, yes. But I have heard of people passing out, getting punched in the chest and stopping their heart. Do they call that the dim mock? The dim mock. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I guess that could be the dim mock, but it's not a touch though. You have to like smoke somebody in the chest. I don't even know if that's a real thing. Like maybe an ancient Chinese secret, you know, a little touch or, you see these McDojo schools that do that and they make the guy pass out, they fold their leg and start slapping the back of their neck. I'm like, come on guys. I just want to fight those people. All right, here we go. King of Queens brawl, baby. Uh, first off, Kevin James. Really cool dude in, 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 in uh, real life. Really nice guy. Um, I actually went to his son's birthday party at his house. Uh, Chris Wyman and Kevin James are good buds. And um, obviously going up and training with Chris and now he's family. Uh, he, my brother actually married Chris Wyman's sister. So I spent a lot of time up in, in, in New York. Um, he becomes, he, I think he was on one of Kevin James's TV recent TV shows. Chris played one of the one of the police officers on there. <laughs> this is great, man. There's only one song Chris Wyman can sing, and that is "I Believe I Can Fly." I believe I can fly. He knows, that's like the only song that he knows and the only song he will ever sing. <laughs> like everybody's crying, listening to Chris. Now, normally if I would hear Chris Wyman sing, I would cry because it was that bad. Not because it was that good. Come on, Chris Wyman, who are you kidding? But went to his house several times, super nice guy. Went to his kid's birthday party. My dad actually trained Kevin James. He was on a comedy tour, came by the gym. My dad worked him out. Uh, for about an hour, hour and a half, put him through his paces, and uh, super nice guy, and legit martial artist. And how's that gonna happen? Nobody has the right to put their hands on you. 
If you put your hands on me, I'm taking that as a threat and I will do whatever I can to defend myself. Even if it's a little push, I'm, I'm, I'm coming after you. I like it, it's like crew versus crew. Oh wait, is that Rampage? And wait a second. And Dan Henderson, wait, you had a whole bunch of, Couture? Yeah, Fr Frank Trigg? Sorry, Kevin James, but you're about to die. <laughs> oh. Oh no, wait a second. Wait, I knew he could take his teeth out. What? Oh my gosh. They're getting the crap beat out of him. Oh. Oh, shoulder throw, yes. A uh, real situation, I would use that in a heartbeat. Shoulder throw, uh, little judo there. Oh, rear naked choke. <laughs> this is actually kind of funny because Matt Hughes finished Frank Trigg the exact same way. So that was, you know, kind of a, a, a comical for him to actually do that to somebody because he was finished that way. And of course you got Rampage, just picking some dude up and carrying him across the room. Rampage is the, is the type of guy, he was known for that crazy knockout. Oh, little double leg. Now you've seen that happen so many times in like old Westerns, guys being like thrown across the bar. Uh, first off, I would find it very difficult just to even get somebody up on top of the bar to be able to do that. They would have to be already out or something. I don't know. These, guys, these dudes are looking serious. They got cauliflower ear. And that's one of the things I look at in a, in a real situation. I'll be out at a restaurant. And then maybe this is the fighter in me or just the man in me. I don't know if you guys have done this before, but you get this crazy crew coming into a, a restaurant and maybe they're wearing like a tight shirt. I don't know, the guy looks like he's tough. I'm low key thinking about if stuff went down, how could I take this guy out, right? I always do that. I don't know why. <laughs> that was a mistake. Anderson Silva, never surrender. This is definitely a young Anderson Silva. Who is this guy? <laughs> he said, bring it, baby. Bring it! <laughs> see, see, okay, see how many shots this, this guy has taken? He took like three shots right off the bat, didn't block one of them, and the guy's still standing. In a real fight, maybe one or two of those punches, the guy's out. The guy's out. Especially if you're getting hit by Anderson Silva, the GOAT. I think there's some really good boxing though. Like good, good body positioning, good hooks, good uppercuts. Okay, <clears throat> who do you know has taken a full-on fledged roundhouse kick to the face and not been knocked out, right? They need to start making movies more realistic just to show people how you know, how it would really go down a real fight. Two or three punches, guy would be, of course that makes a boring movie, but still, imagine if that's how they did it. I don't think anybody would go to the movies anymore. <laughs> Ooh, another roundhouse, guy's still up. I don't get it. It's like four kicks in a row. Oh, broke the leg. And here, I feel like he's gonna break his neck. <clears throat> I mean, how, ooh, wow, okay. A little uh, butterfly twist into a roundhouse kick. Finally, okay, finally kills the guy. Fun fact, I've sparred with Anderson Silva. Really cool, uh, probably one of my all-time favorite moments, like martial arts moments. Not only did I spar with him, but I also got to spar with uh, Leo Tomachita as well. So my inspiration at the time, because he was a karate guy. So really cool to see Anderson Silva in a, in, in a movie. Sakuraba versus Rampage, here we go. This is definitely Sakuraba. And he's a legend in Japan as well. I got to meet him in Vegas. Look at those ears, man. They called him the Gracie Killer. Now, fun fact, these guys really fought each other in pride. And I think Sakuraba won. Hajime! That was like a real leg kick you just saw. Ooh. It, it sounds like a real sparring match. I actually, you know, got filmed some of my sparring matches so I can kind of see 
what I do wrong, what I do right in a sparring session, right? And it actually sounds like a real sparring match. The leg kicks landing. I mean, obviously they're, they're going light with the punches, but it doesn't look choreographed. It looks like they're just going out there having some fun, like with the takedown, the ground and pound. Dude, they're really punching each other. I wonder what the whole situation was during this movie was like, hey, you just gotta go out there and fight and we'll see what happens. Oh, triangle, baby. Oh, Rampage with it. Boom. Rampage with it again. Here, come on, lift him up. Boom. The takedowns. Oh, rear naked choke. Here it is. Come on. And he's out. And he's out. He's done though. That was like a real sparring match. I like that. That was really cool. Of course, you got two martial artists there, so that's what you get. That's what you're gonna get when you have two, you know, really good martial artists out there making a movie. Friends. Tank Abbott was like one of my first, like one of my one of my first all-time favorite fighters because he was just a brawler. Hey, it's the ultimate fighting combo. Yeah, I saved 30 cents, plus I get to keep the cup. Yeah. <laughs> The big gulp, look at that, the octagon. It's got even got the octagon on it, the, the logo. Is that Bruce Buffer? This is black hair Bruce Buffer, not gray headed Bruce Buffer. This guy's Daddy Monica. He's in a karate uniform with a white belt, what? First off, you're walking out to the octagon with a white belt. Tank Abbott, dude, he had the black beard and everything. Look at this dude. No gloves. He's going old, old school. Back in the day, even I don't care if you're back in the day or even now, you're not allowed, fans are not allowed to get up on top of the cage. You would be escorted out immediately. What are you doing, Monica? Well, that guy is in serious, serious trouble. <laughs> Man, look at this dude. No teeth. Oh, double leg. <clears throat> oh. oh. <laughs> now, how that's funny because Tank Abbott has actually done that to his opponents. Picked him up and tried to throw him out of the cage. Never been done before since then. I think that's when they made it illegal during that fight. So uh, I find if you're stepping in the cage with uh, Tank Abbott, he's going to lift you up and try and ooze you through the cage. So that was realistic. Amazing, okay, so that, that wraps that Sweet. up. Sweet. Incredible stuff, man. I knew you would flow with this so oh, man, well. Are you kidding me? I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching that video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. We do at least three video uploads per week, so you get a pretty good value out of it. Comment below if we missed anything or if you just liked it. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Jason the Heart or our official account at On Point MMA on Twitter. And if you'd like to get a little bit more involved in our community, you can join us on Discord. The links are in the description. Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next video.